In today's video, I'm going to go to Harbor Freight Tools and buy a Jackery Portable Power Station. I recently heard that Harbor Freight Tools started carrying Jackery Portable Power Stations along with some other off-grid technologies such as solar panels and charge controllers. The Explorer 290 is listed on Harbor Freight's website for $279, but this week there's a $20 coupon. Even with that coupon, I have found cheaper prices on Amazon.com and Jackery.com, so make sure you check out the link in the description to see what the current price is. Let's head over to Harbor Freight Tools and see if we can find that portable power station and also see how much it costs. Once we get it, we'll test it and see if it's worth what we paid for it. There were like three of these in here last week. Did you want the replacement plan for that? No thanks. All right, there you go. Hey, thank you, you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. So it ended up being 220 with the coupon because I did sign up for the inside track while I was in there. The inside track did cost thirty dollars. So the total price with the inside track plus taxes was $270. It actually surprises me that Harbor Freight Tools is carrying these Jackery portable power stations because up until recently, Harbor Freight has been known for lower quality products. It used to be that you would buy something like a screwdriver with a lifetime warranty, expecting it to break, and then you'd bring it in and exchange it. The reason I bring this up is Jackery is known to be a higher quality portable power station. So I'm not so worried about the quality of the product as I am concerned with the value of what you get for what you're paying. This is interesting to me because at one point, Jackery was putting the Honda logo or licensing the Honda logo on their devices. This means that those portable power stations aren't that bad. However, that Jackery Explorer did have a slightly larger battery. So if Honda's comfortable putting their name on it, then it must be dependable. So enough talking, let's open this thing up and find out what's inside. In the box, you get a warranty card, you get the device, of course, and then you also get this neoprene bag with the two charging cables in it. So in there, you have your DC to DC charger cable. This cable will hook into your car's outlet and then hook into the device and provide some power. The next item in the box is this AC charging cable, and this AC charging cable can provide up to around 60 watts of power to the Jackery 290. I don't know how useful this neoprene case is going to be in practice. Maybe if it was orange, it might help. Like, hey, I'm going to remember that my cables are in here. But otherwise, I'm not sure if this is something I would actually use. If I had only this device, I would leave this in my car and then maybe leave this in my home or take it with me if I'm traveling to plug it into the wall outlet. So I'll set that aside for now. This 12 volt charging cable is actually pretty nice. It feels like it's a really high quality and it is Jackery branded. So it's not just some generic stuff they pulled off the shelf in the parts bin and added to the product. So that's a pretty good cable. This is something you will probably use a lot, especially if you're not using a solar panel. This cable will pretty much reside in my vehicle, in my glove box, or even plugged into my outlet if I'm charging this long-term. This AC charging cable is pretty standard. It's 60 watts. Now this wire feels a little bit like it might not last forever, but I guess you wouldn't be moving this around that often if you're using this to charge. Where Jackery saved their money over the Explorer 300 with the Explorer 290 is with this AC inverter. The AC inverter here is only rated at 200 watts continuous with surges up to 400 watts. There aren't many devices that you would actually want to use this for that are that low in power. I find that to be a little light, but it is what it is and it performs as stated. Additionally, we have two USB-A ports and these ports are only rated at up to 12 watts. So five volts, 2.4 amps. They're okay, but in 2022, they are a little dated. Additionally, there are no USB-C outlets. A USB-C outlet might be considered standard on a device this size nowadays. Next, we have our 12 volt DC outlet. This is a pretty standard DC outlet. It's rated at 12 volts, 10 amps, or 120 watts. So this will run a mini fridge. It's also regulated. So you can use most of the internal battery capacity with that regulated DC outlet. Finally, I have the input. There's one input on this device and it's good for charging with both the AC power brick 
a solar panel, or even the DC to DC car charger. The display on the Jackery 290 isn't that bad. It does show input wattage, output wattage, and it also shows a percentage of battery power remaining. In addition to that, it has the five bar 20% gradation, so it has more battery remaining gauges than necessary. Let's do some testing. The first thing I'm gonna start with is the USB outlets. It's the lowest power. And I'm gonna take this relatively discharged iPad and see if the iPad will pull 12 watts from the Jackery. Now the iPad normally does pull up to 15 watts and that depends on the state of charge. It did spike up to 12, but it's going down to 10 watts. So the iPad plugged up does take up to 12 watts from the Jackery. So to me, that means that the USB-A outlet works as designed. That's a win. So I am going to test the 12 volt DC outlet and really I'm looking forward to make sure this thing is above 12 volts. That'll indicate that the DC outlet is regulated at 12 volts. And so I'll plug this in, turn it on, and on my display here with my mini fridge, I do see 13.4 volts. Now the fridge has not cycled on because it's not in a cycle mode right now, but if I lower the temperature, it should cycle on and even with the fridge running, it should still register around 13.5 volts. So right now with the motor running, the fridge is still pulling around 13 volts and I'm pulling about 50 watts from the mini fridge. This is what I expected. That means that this Jackery is able to access most of its battery power. Some other devices don't have those regulated outlets that you would only be able to use about 50% of the battery because the voltage drops and causes the fridge to shut off. So the next thing that I'm gonna test is this My Heat heater. This My Heat heater does pull up to about 250 watts, but it does settle down to around 200 watts in use. The reason I'm gonna use this is just for testing. This thing will pull all of the power out of the Jackery Explorer in around an hour, maybe about an hour and a half. So I would not recommend using a heater like this with a small power station. This My Heat heater does pull quite a bit of power. Let's see if this works. I have the AC outlet turned on and I'm gonna turn on the device. Jumping up to over 100. So once it spiked up to almost 230 watts, it is dropping back down to its steady state power load, which is around 200 watts. So the My Heat heater did settle into around 196 watts. It's running steady state. The Jackery Explorer 290 is not having any trouble running this device. So I believe that the inverter does perform as tested. This is the last device that I will be testing with the Jackery Explorer 290. And the reason is this thing is rated at 300 watts. So I've used this with several power stations that are in this 250 to $300 range. And this is usually the highest load that I will test on devices like that. So this is rated at 300 watts, which is above the design spec. So really what I'm testing here is how long will this run this device before shutting itself off? So we're spiking up to around 300 watts and once it hit 314 it did shut off the display did show that we hit 314 watts with the device so i didn't hit the 400 watts of surge power but i would say that the jackery explorer 290 does give you a little bit of wiggle room with what kind of devices you're plugging into it this explorer 290 is rated to accept up to 60 watts and i have my 100 watt rock pal solar panel and we're going to see if i can get the 60 watts in it yes this solar panel is a little big for the jackery explorer 290 but by having a slightly larger solar panel i will be able to get the 60 watts of input put for a longer period during the day. All right, so let's plug it in and see what we get. Nice, so we jumped right up to 50 watts. This eight millimeter to MC4 cable did not come with the Jackery Explorer. So if your solar panel doesn't have one, you'll probably have to pick that up as an additional accessory after you make the purchase. However, some of the newer power stations do come with this cable already in the box. So I do have a 180 watt solar panel mounted on the roof of my minivan camper and that is connected to this cable right here. So I'll either let the smoke out of the Jackery by plugging this 180 watt solar panel in, or I will at least get the 60 watts of charge that this thing is rated at. And there you have it. I'm pulling 62 watts from 180 watt solar panel. This thing is managing that power. So with a panel that large on my roof, I will be able to get 60 watts for longer in the day. If I bought a 60 watt solar panel and plugged it in, I would probably only be getting 40 to 50 watts, and that will only be for a few hours throughout the day. From Harbor Freight, I did pay 270 out the door for this product, and that was with probably the most extreme discount that you can get through Harbor Freight. You can also get this from Lowe's for about 250, 
and I believe Home Depot has it on their website for about $220. For the price that you're paying, you are getting a decent quality portable power station. So when you take that into consideration, it's not a bad product for what you get for the price that you're paying. However, I think some of the newer products in 2022 do have better features for almost the same price. If you wanna find out about the EB3A, watch this video and I'll see you on my next adventure.